In this session, we are going to cover the concept summary of the entire chapter on playing with numbers. So we'll be covering all the concepts that we learned in this chapter. Now let us start with factors and multiples. So we first learned about factor. What is a factor? A factor of a number is an exact divisor of the number. What is a multiple? A number is a multiple of each of its factors. Then we also studied some observations about factors. The number 1 is a factor of every number. Every number is a factor of itself. Also, every factor of a number is an exact divisor of that number. Every factor will be less than or equal to the given number and the number of factors of a given number are finite. Observations that we learned about the multiples. Every multiple of a number is greater than or equal to that number. The number of multiples of a given number are finite and every number is a multiple of itself. Then we learned about perfect numbers. A number for which the sum of all its factors is equal to twice the number is called a perfect number. So that was our discussion on factors and multiples. Then we discussed about prime numbers. So the definition of prime number says that the numbers other than 1 whose only factors are 1 and the number itself are called as the prime numbers. What are composite numbers? The numbers that are having more than two factors or in other words numbers that are not prime numbers are composite numbers. Some observations. Number 1 is neither prime nor a composite number. 2 is the smallest prime number and also the only even prime number. Every prime number except the number 2 is odd. Then we learned a method to find out prime numbers from 1 to 100. The method is known as sieve of Eratosthenes. The way we begin is we first write a table from 1 to 100 and then we start crossing out as described below. We first cross out 1 because we know that it is not a prime number. 1 is neither a prime nor a composite number so we just cross it out. Then we encircle 2 and then cross out all the multiples of 2 other than the number 2 itself. Then we go to the next uncrossed number which is going to be 3. Then we cross all the multiples of 3 other than 3 itself. The next uncrossed number will be 5. Cross all multiples of 5 other than 5 itself. And we continue like this till all the numbers are encircled or crossed out in the list from 1 to 100. Then the numbers that are encircled at the end of this process are the prime numbers from 1 to 100 and the numbers that are crossed other than the 1 they will be the composite numbers. Then we learned about odd and even numbers. What are even numbers? Numbers that are multiples of 2. Examples 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and so on. Then what are odd numbers? Numbers that are not multiples of 2. Examples 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21 and so on. And then we also learned a quick test whether to identify that a number is odd or even. And the test says that a number with 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 in the ones place is an even number else it is going to be odd. As simple a test as that. Having discussed these concepts related to prime numbers, we then moved on to discuss the tests for divisibility of numbers. So we learned all these divisibility tests and the rules for them. Divisibility by 10. If a number has 0 in 1's place, then it is divisible by 10. Divisibility by 5. If a number has 0 or 5 in 1's place, then it is divisible by 5. Divisibility by 2. If a number has 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8 in 1's place, then it is divisible by 2. 
divisibility by 3. If sum of digits of a number is a multiple of 3, then it is divisible by 3. Divisibility by 6. If a number is divisible by both 2 and 3, then it is divisible by 6 also. Divisibility by 4. A number with 3 or more digits is divisible by 4 if the number formed by the last two digits in the 1s and 10s place is a multiple of 4. And the divisibility for 1 and 2 digit numbers by 4 must be checked by actual division by 4. Divisibility by 8. A number with 4 or more digits is divisible by 8 if the number formed by the last 3 digits is divisible by 8. Divisibility for 1, 2 and 3 digit numbers by 8 must be checked by actual division. Divisibility for 9. If the sum of digits of a number is divisible by 9, then the number is also divisible by 9. Divisibility by 11. The method to find it is first we find the difference between the sum of the digits at the odd places from the right. Find the sum of the digits at the even places from the right of the number. If the difference is either 0 or divisible by 11, then the number is divisible by 11. So this concluded our discussion on tests for divisibility of numbers. Then we started our discussion on common factors. And two numbers which have only one as the common factor are called co-prime numbers. What is the importance of common factors? Finding common factors provides us with numbers that are exact divisors of both the numbers. It could also be for more than two numbers. So that was about common factors. Then we learned what is common multiples. And we also found find out how do you find out common multiples for two or more numbers? We just take in the uh, we find out multiples and just observe what are the common multiples. After our discussion on common factors and multiples, we discuss some more divisibility rules. So the first one was divisibility by factors. If a number is divisible by another number, then it is also divisible by each of the factors of that number. So for example, if a number is divisible by 6, then it will also be divisible by 2 and 3, which are both the factors of 6. Then divisibility by prime numbers. Co-prime numbers are those numbers whose only common factor is 1. So for in that case, if a number is divisible by two co-prime numbers, then it is divisible by their product also. Divisibility for sum of two numbers. If two numbers are divisible by a number, then their sum is also divisible by that number. Divisibility for subtraction of two numbers. If the numbers are divisible by a number, then the difference is also divisible by that number. After exploring the divisibility rules, we did a discussion on prime factorization. What is factorization? Factorization is nothing but when we express a number as a product of its factors. And when you finally get the factors, the ultimate factors are nothing but the prime numbers. Such factorization of the numbers is called prime factorization because the final factors are prime numbers. Then we learned the concept of a factor tree in which we write down the numbers and keep on uh, finding out the factors of each level of the tree till we reach to the prime numbers, the ultimate prime factors. And then a very big factor tree. Then we learned about using the table method to find the prime factors of larger numbers. Having said that, we discussed about highest common factor also known as HCF. So what is HCF? HCF of two or more given numbers is the highest or greatest of their common factors. It is also known as the greatest common divisor. And essentially it is the biggest number which is an exact divisor of both numbers. And the method to find HCF for a given set of numbers is first we do a prime factorization of each of the numbers. Then we get the common prime factors for all the numbers and multiply the common factors to get the HCF or the GCD. Then we learned about the lowest common multiple also called as the least common multiple. So LCM of two or more numbers is the smallest of their common multiples. 
It is the common, smallest common multiple. It is the smallest number for which both of these numbers are a factor. Method for finding LCM. Do a prime factorization for both the numbers. Then write down the common factors. And the LCM of the two numbers is the product of prime factors counted maximum number of times they occur in any of the numbers. So this was the initial method. We also learnt a simpler method to find LCM. So what we do is we first make a table and then we start dividing by the least prime number that divides any of the given number in a table. Continue this till there are no multiples of 2. Then we go to the next prime number and we start the division by the next prime number which is going to be 3. We continue this till there is no a number which can be divided by 3. Similarly, we see that the next prime number is 5 and we continue the division. So we continue this till we have 1 left in all the columns. And then we just multiply all the numbers that we get on the left hand side of the column. So that was about, about the lowest common multiple. Then we learned about real life applications of HCF. And then how do we easily find out whether to find an HCF or LCM for a given problem. So if you, you should look out for words like maximum, greatest and biggest. If you have that, then in that case, we need to find out HCF. And if you look out for words like minimum, least or smallest, in that case, we need to find out the LCM. So that was our discussion on the chapter on playing with numbers. See you soon.